Hey guys, in these next few videos, I'm going to show you how to drop the beat, specifically dropping on the one. Now we already learned how to count beats, bars, and phrases and figure out where the one is on every phrase. And we also learned how to cue up our tracks. So now we're gonna learn how to drop them in. Now using a DJ controller with DJ software like Serato, you have a few different options. If you were just using a turntable, the only way you could drop it in was to rub the record and let it go. But you guys have a few options here. You have jog wheels, so you can do it manually, which is really cool because then you get to scratch. So I'm gonna definitely teach you that. And then also you have some buttons right here. So you have the play button and the cue button. So in the cue lesson, I sort of showed you this already. Uh, that's sort of for auditioning it. So if we were to set a temporary cue point here and then hit it again to play it, it wouldn't continue playing. Once I let go, it stops playing. So that's not dropping it in. That's just auditioning it. If we wanted to drop it in using the cue button, like I said before, you'd have to press Q and then press play, right? And then you're dropping it in, meaning it's continuing playing. Now, dropping it in also means dropping it in with the other track, right? So that's what we're referring to now when we say dropping on the one. We're talking about dropping on the one of the other track that's playing, right? So to do that, you can either use your cue option as you're auditioning and then press play, um, or uh, you can use your cue point. So say you were auditioning it and then you wanted to drop it in, right? You could just hit the cue point on the one of that phrase. So that's an option as well. However, my favorite way, especially with jog wheels, is to use the jog wheel uh, and cue it up. So now I have more control. I don't have to listen. You know, oh, one thing you could do instead of using the key point is get it right to the beginning and just press play. So that makes the most sense if you're using, if you only want to use buttons just to press play because you're not hearing audio and then seeing a cue point. Uh, but you have options. But the jog wheel is the coolest way because you guys get to scratch. So the first scratch I'm going to teach you is the baby scratch. So we're going to just press this cue point and get it right at the beginning. Now, when I teach this on turntables, I teach you how to mark your records. Uh, and you can put little marks on the platters. However, they don't always correlate when you're rewinding and forwarding, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love the Newmark NV2 and the Newmark NV, is because they have the screens right there. So I don't have to stare at my laptop and, you know, to see the beginning of the track. I can look right there. It's right in front of me. And it doesn't take my focus off the audience or anything like that. Um, so the baby scratch is essentially just rubbing the platter or the song back and forth, okay? So you're just gonna go forward, right? And back, forward, back. Now notice my hand is right here on the platter and we have it right at the beginning, right there. So we want to get it right at the very beginning of the sound. You don't want to start it uh, way before because then it takes a long time to get to the sound. Right? It's not as accurate. And the reason why this is important is because you need to be able to drop it precisely uh, when you let it go after your baby scratching it. Or if you're just scratching it, you want sound to be there. <laughs> so you don't want to do it uh, early. And you also don't want to do it late. So if you look at this sound wave right here, you know, I'm not at the beginning of the sound anymore. So if you want to do a scratch like this, you know, and you want that specific sound, that's one thing. But if you're doing it by mistake, you know, you want to be able to do it consciously. So you don't want to just by mistake get to that part. You want to consciously get to the beginning of the sound, the beginning of the song, the beginning of the beat, right? And just baby scratch it forward and back. Notice I'm not I'm like going super far. <laughs> I look ridiculous when I do that. And also the platter is really tiny. So <laughs> you don't want to do that uh, because uh, you won't be as accurate. So just short little movements. And you can practice them fast. And slow.
uh, but practice it a few different ways and just really hone in on that beginning part. Also, if you lose it, right, all you gotta do is put your hand on the platter and press the cue point again, and you're right back at the beginning. Now, one thing I didn't mention before, and I should have, is that you need to have the platter set to scratch, okay? Notice, uh, and a lot of controllers have a feature, if they have platters, they have this feature where you can turn the platter on and off. Even CDJs have that feature. So right here, it's called scratch on this controller. If this is illuminated, then I can manipulate the track by moving the platter, right? Uh, just like this. And then I can pitch bend it using the outside like we talked about before. However, if it's not in scratch mode, then uh, when I do this, when it's playing, when it's paused, it still sort of acts the same way, but when it's playing, I can't scratch it. I'm, I'm pitch bending it now. So I can speed it up and slow it down, kind of like how the outside works, but I can't scratch it, right? So for this technique, um, if you want to do this manually and do any sort of scratching at all or any baby scratch or just release the track manually with the platter, you need it in scratch mode. Now I can manip manipulate it, right? So I'm just gonna, so I'm way far into the song. So here's a perfect example. I just put it at nine o'clock, hit my cue point right there. And that's the baby scratch. If you wanna learn more, check out the next video.